<laughs> hello, uh, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? It is a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. It's like 80 something degrees, 85, 82, 85, 90. Feels nice out here. Yeah, feels amazing out here. So we're, anyway, let's not ramble. Paul, one of the co-founders of the Temba Way, so excited that everybody who's here, everybody who's gonna join us later, has decided to pop in for another live video. Introduce yourself. And you guys know me, Makanaka. Oh my, he's about to give his whole, <laughs> his whole you know, CV. 23 years old, computer Nobody, science. No one wants that. That's about it. All yeah. right, cool, economics. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, um, today, today we wanted to talk about something that seems almost generic, but common sense at the same time, but we're gonna talk about it, right? Yep. How to go next level. That's what the title of the video says, right? How to go next level. How do you do that? What does it take? How do you master it? How do you become a student of the game? All of that. We're gonna hit some of those points today, but how to go next level. So. We have uh, three points. The first one is letting go of your ego. Mm -hmm. The second one is understanding your blind spots. Uh -huh. And then the third one is accept that you don't know everything and learning how to deal with the fact that you don't know everything. And Boom. those are the three points Boom. that we have for today. We might as well just end the video right there. But we won't. <laughs> we won't. But we might, might as well. So, as you said, the first one is letting go of your ego. So, quote me on this. In order, I'm holding this like it's the Bible. It's just a book. <laughs> quote, me, quote me on this. In order to go next level, right, and whatever it is, sports, academics, socially, spiritually, anything. In order to go next level, you have to be willing to let go of your ego. Simple as that. You have to be willing to let go of your ego. The reason this is the first step is that we often think we know it all. So, if I'm functioning as if I'm right all the time, if I'm functioning as if I have all the answers, if I'm functioning as if no one else can tell me what it is because I know what it is, I'm here to get mine, we're not gonna progress, we're not gonna go next level because we're always gonna function here. If you let go of your ego, right? If you get to the point where you're comfortable with humility, if you're comfortable with allowing other people to tell you when you're wrong, and that's so important. That's something I'm working on myself right now. Being able to have other people who are willing to tell me, hey Paul, you're wrong about this. Just yesterday, just yesterday, um, one of my buddies and I were talking and he proposed this question. He said, what do you think would happen if gas was dropped from the $3 and whatever cents to 50 cents a gallon? What do you think? And automatically, being the economist that I am, with my natural instinct, because everything works in a, in a model, and a graph, I said, I think consumption would go up of gas, and money put toward gasoline would jump up immediately. That's what I said, without a single thought. Joseph, what's good? Love that guy. <laughs> what's good? So, that was my immediate thought, without even giving it a second thought. So, we kind of argued back and forth. Um, and he's trying to explain to me, there's no possible way that 50 cent a gallon gas is going to catch up with $3.10 gas. There's no way. Now, I argued the point of, listen, gas 50 cents, we're going to go from, hey, I need a ride or I'm not driving, <laughs> you're not driving, he's not driving, they're not driving, to this. Gas 50 cents a gallon? Who's driving? I'm picking you up. We're all going separately. And I argued that regardless of how much... Regardless of like gas being 50 cents a gallon, there is absolutely no way that we would not catch up. Ultimately, after about 30 to 40 minutes of, we'll call it, constructive discussion, <laughs> I was wrong. I lost my argument. But being able to have people that tell you that you are wrong. You let go of your ego and you let those people into you, that is step one of going next level. Hit us with step two, Doug. Step two is understanding your blind spots. What do you mean by that? Okay, um, how can I put it? You can start off and I'll just add to it. All right, bet. So, um, when it comes to understanding your blind spots, I, li I like to look at this as one of two ways. Most people will fall into one of two categories. The first is 
like me, I see the big picture. Um, and because I see the big picture, I will tend to miss a lot of details as we go on. Here's an example. Uh, one of my goals leading towards the end of the month is to be able to drop 15 pounds. That's not impossible. It's not easy. It's doable. But I'm going to freaking do it. But because I see big picture, this is what, this, in my mind, this is how it goes. I need to eat better. I need to do more cardio and stop doing a lot of heavy lifting and all that. That's, that's great and all. But what I was missing is that there was a lot of tiny things in between. So today I was talking to my brother John, and he just threw in a quick detail that I never even thought about. BCAAs, blockchain amino acids. He's a biochemist, um, and to him, he was able to see down to the molecular level of how I'm going to be able to achieve my goal. To me, I'm just like, all I really need to do is what? Work out. All right, work out. You Good can ask cardio. him. I've been eating salad <laughs> out the <laughs> the wahoo, right? Uh, cutting out my meats, it's and it sucks. Um, I hate it. And then just picking up more cardio. So doing like two to three miles a day. And then for me, that's that's an accomplishment. I don't care what you say. <laughs> that's an accomplishment. But because he's able to see that quick, let me insert the blockchain amino acids into your routine, right? Now my whole goal, I'm going to be able to achieve it even more efficiently, a lot faster, with more calorie intake. Because in my mind, I was like, I'm going to limit myself to like 900 calories a day. Which mm -hmm. for a guy that's what? 246 six. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be hard but because I'm a, I'm able to have those people like my brother who are able to give me the the small picture stuff not small picture but more detailed they're more detail oriented I'm able to go next level myself not on the other side of that we have the people that are able to see all the just details, the details yeah. and the great part about it is because they see all the details they're able to focus keenly focus on different things but here's here's the, here's the falling part of that because they focus so much on the details, they miss the big picture. picture. So those kind of people definitely need people who are like, yo, let me pull you back. Remember what you're trying to accomplish. Remember where you're trying to hit, right? Remember your end goal. <laughs> yeah. You have to be able to figure out which is your blind spot. Do you see the big picture and is your blind spot the details? Or do you see all the details and is your blind spot the big picture? Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, going to what Paul is saying, back in high school, uh, when you had like group projects, I was one of those people who would always look at the small picture, like the small details. So if we had like uh, in one of my classes, video production, I don't know if you took it with Mr. Donnelly. Never did. Good class. So Allegedly. <laughs> so the goal of the class was to make videos at the end of every week. And like during the week, we would be writing down what we needed to do, the synopsis, you know, draw the clips and whatnot. The type of person that I was, I would always look at how, like, the small things about the picture. So I look at uh, the things we need to do in the video, but I wouldn't always look at, like, how the video is always going to turn out at the end. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Donnelly, my teacher, he pulled me aside. He was like, yo, uh, you're one of the smartest people I have in my class, but you're not using your smarts up to the ability that you can. He told me that I was always looking at the small picture is I look at the big picture. And after you told me that, uh, I kind of changed the way I would look at things. And okay. I started to look at things like the bigger picture, using small details at the same time. So I was kind of doing both at the same time. In that process, did you have other people? Like, I mean, obviously, yeah, in my group. Don Lee um, was able to be like, yo, you yeah. need to start looking at everything on a larger scale. But do you have people in your group, Tell even me that. that were just like, yo, this is what we need to focus on. This is where we need to it was like, pull uh, towards? Everyone was pretty much doing whatever they wanted to do. Well, it was one of those groups. That's a whole different talk. Yeah. yeah. That's a, uh, dream, teamwork makes the dream, dream work. work. But, yeah. So, definitely being able to understand your blind spots and thinking for that example. And once you be, you're able to, you know, kind of hone in on what it is you need to work on, right? What's your weakness? I don't know why I did quotation marks. But what's, what, what is your weakness? Simple yeah. as that. Once you're able to figure out what your weakness is, boom. Step two and going next level, right? So our last step was about um, being able to know that you don't have all the answers. And then the other part of that is being able to learn to deal with not knowing things. What does that mean? Not knowing things. You're, you're known unknowns, <laughs> right? So we were kind of chatting earlier about this. And I personally believe that 
if you're able to learn to deal with not knowing things, that's actually more important than what you do know. Why? Because all this, so all this is about learning to be radically open-minded. Let's just, let's just go with that. Learn to be radically open-minded. And radically open-minded people have developed this a bit. Oh, look at that sunlight. Radically <laughs> open-minded people have developed the ability to be able to ask the proper questions to more advanced people, to smarter people, to people who have more life experience. If you don't ask questions to the correct people, you're going to be stuck at the same level. You, you can't make that up. You cannot make that up. We don't have all the answers. So if you function here and you think you know everything here and the people you need to ask are here, the only way to, to get here is what? Suck up your pride and ask. And ask. Worst that can happen is people give you what? A no. True. A no. That's, that's the worst <clears throat> that can happen. But, <coughs> but, 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 radically open-minded people have developed the ability to suck up one, let go of their ego, mm -hmm. right? Let go of their ego. Two, just suck up the suck and find the correct people that need to help them take them next level. Simple as that. Do you want to add anything yes. to that? To the third one, um, like back when I was in, ele was in elementary or middle school, uh -huh. actually, when I came to America, I was in fifth grade. Okay. I'm from Zimbabwe for all of you guys who don't know. But back in Zimbabwe, in class, math class, I was always like in the top three students who would get every question right. Mm -hmm. I came to America, and that was not the case. So I would always think, oh, my way was right, and the teacher that was teaching me my math subject was wrong. So one day, I talked to my teacher. I was like, hey, I don't think you're doing this the right way. Mm -hmm. Back in Zimbabwe, this is how we do certain problems and the process of going through it. And I had to suck up my pride and swallow my ego and say, hey, you know, I'm wrong. Maybe I should go ask my teacher. Who knows? My teacher was up here. I was at this level. So I had to suck it up and say, hey, do you mind, you know, teaching me something that I could use to get better at math? Since apparently I wasn't good at the math over here. Yeah. So he told me a couple of things I could use. And lo and behold, my grade in math class started going up. Ended up being in the grade started going students. next level. Look at that. Exactly. Now he can tell his down. kids when I was your age, <laughs> <laughs> I was number one. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm. When I was your age, I was number one, right? But that's I love that example. A hundred percent. Being able to just understand where <clears throat> it is you're failing, and yeah. then find somebody who can help you go next level. I think that that would basically culminate it. Pretty Let's much, just yeah. hit it again. Let go of your ego. Figure out what your blind spots are and then be able to not only suck up your pride, but be able to figure out what you don't know and then ask the right questions yep. to the right people. Exactly, right people. See, not I just don't, not willy teacher. nilly, but ask the right questions to the right, right people. people yep. My dad always used to say, when it comes to like your academics, when you're sitting in class, there's no such thing as a wrong, a wrong question, as a stupid yeah. question. There's no such thing. Because if you don't know and if you don't ask, guess what happens? You don't know. know. Simple as that, guys. Y'all have a wonderful, 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 wonderful evening. Keep being y'all. Get out of the sun. It's too warm to be sitting it inside. Really is, yeah. Um we're gonna keep getting it. Towards the end of the week, Evan's gonna tell us about his internship. I'm excited. He's been grinding. Seeing him go next level himself is amazing. He's killing it. So, end of the week, that's what we're looking forward to. But we're going to catch y'all on a different day tomorrow. Y'all have a great evening. And just keep being y'all. Keep being y'all. Keep being great. We got to go. Bye.